Isn't it past your bedtime? You're good. But I'm Crowley. You are a big fish. I wanted to do you the honor of sealing this deal personally. Supernatural certainly has a history of kind of making our villains our friends, and Crowley's probably the biggest example of that. She said the deal would be sealed with a kiss. That's right. I wanted to win. I perverted Mother's spell, put Lucifer in a vessel of my own making because I wanted to win. You have any idea how many people have made a play for my throne over the years? Lucifer, Abaddon, blah, 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 blah. Too damn many. I thought if I could put the devil on a leash, my own personal nuke, no one would ever dare challenge me again. Yeah, that worked out great. Focused for so long on keeping my job. Never realized I hate it. All oh, those whining demons, the endless moan of damned souls, the paperwork. I mean, who wants that? You. Once, maybe. in the evolution of the character he went from being an obvious villain type who was using the winchesters you have less than one minute before a very dear friend of yours snuffs it to ultimately joining forces with them as often as possible fine but then the angel tablet comes to us on what grounds on the grounds that you're a douchebag and no douchebag should have that much power he ended up caring about the winchesters no. despite himself so why are you here well whenever there's a world-ending crisis at hand. I know where to place my bets. It's on you. You big, beautiful, lumbering piles of flannel. So if you'll forgive my transgression, I'll make it worth your while. within hell and among other demons. Turns out I'm the answer to all your problems. Crowley's the creepy uncle who you kind of keep your distance at Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll just napalm your ass anyhow. Dude, he's a dick. I mean, a deal's a deal. Get bent. He was great comic relief, a great voice. You just gonna sit there? No, I'm gonna river dance. I suppose if you want to impress the ladies. Which means? After we put Lucifer back in his cage, together, I'll seal the gates of hell. You'll never see another demon again, apart from, of course, yours truly. You would do that? Why not? They stab me in the back, I'll happily stab them in the front, the sides, and right up their little black-eyed asses. So, we have a deal?
lose, I win. Bye, boys. scene between him and Shatner. I just, just, <laughs> just want to see it. Just going to sit there? Son of a bitch. Yes, I know. Completely worth your soul. I'm a hell of a guy. I was never sure whether he wasn't actually an angel. Crowley, right? So, the Hardy Boys finally found me. Took you long enough. his weakness. Whiny face, but um, yeah, that's you know. I just I would have preferred it in that. If you ever watch the end, watch the end again, you know where that line goes. And that line is pre pre lapped in the Men of Letters scene, which they also cut a big chunk out of, um, which was about winning and losing. It was the setup for the end line, which was my decision. And the decision that Crowley made at the end is a result of the fact 
is, is entirely down to William and Lizzie and what it is. And it's the fact that he makes that decision himself, not, not, uh, it's not thrust upon him. It's like he needs to do it, so he does it. So, why it may be hard to deal with, in my head it will always be him saying, you know, you're going to lose. And me saying, funny, you should say funny. <laughs> when I lose. So these eight years obviously the character evolved and when you learned it was into what it, well you're saying i got fat no <laughs> I you are you're saying i got fat. i put a little weight on but, <laughs> but we all got a little older a little grayer the boys had kids the boys yeah, had yeah, kids. they did the moosey one still had chicken legs so he didn't get any bigger in the end I know that you weren't entirely happy with the wrap up of your character, but I love, love, love the story that you shot for your character's last episode. And so could you share that versus what the audience saw on screen? Well, look, I mean, um, fair play to, to Andrew Dabb. He, he, he'd written a, an end piece, a sort of uh, a placemaker end piece. He wasn't quite sure, I don't think, what he was going to do with the end. And he did the death in 21 which doesn't really make a lot of sense because they don't spark out There's in front no of spark. Lucifer. So I was like, mm. oh. So it, was, it just sort of all turned into this sort of very complicated thing. And, you know, I, I knew I was done, but they can't, there's, a, there's an old God rest, Stephen Bochco, who actually did just pass away. There's something called the Bochco rule. Do you know that? You know that yes, rule? Yes, yes. The Bochco rule is you never tell an actor he's done before you finished filming him. In, because of the type of people that Stephen Boschko used to hire for actors would blow up the set or like yeah. shoot people or not show up or do stuff right. or whatever. So the Boschko rule was always in place. So if you've got an actor and you want to shoot him for episodes, you don't tell him he's, his services are no longer required. But I was, you know, I'd already driven all my stuff down from Canada. I didn't have my apartment anymore. I was aware I wasn't coming back for season 13. So it was the, un, it was, you know, it was the, the situation that dare not speak its name. So, you know, and I said my, my love and goodbyes to everybody. I, I took my time. I took a couple of weeks to thank everybody that I knew. And it, so it wasn't, a, it wasn't an event. It was a sort of, a, a sort of slow letting out of a balloon. Um, and 21 was 21. And it was, I was like, you're going to fix it? And I was like, no. I said, why don't you just leave me dead? It would have been a lot of sense. It would just have me dead there. It would have been a nice shock. Right. He was like, no, 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 we have to do this thing and we have to get this right. So I'm like, okay. So he sent me a script and I said, look, I, I love you and thank you for everything you've done. But, you know, maybe we can, you know, focus us in a little, little direction here. And, and, you know, I said, you know, the only thing, Crowley doesn't care about Fergus and he doesn't care about Rowena and he doesn't care about any of that stuff. Never really did. He only cares about winning. And he always cared about winning. And, you know, he just constantly won. And, you know, there was a thing I had a joke with Jeremy for years that uh, even if they wrote me losing in a situation, I was going to play it like it was my idea anyway. Mm -hmm. And he started laughing. I was talking to Robbie Thompson today. And I was going, like, well, I was, I, it doesn't matter what you guys wrote. I always wrote it like it was my, I always played it like it was my idea. Right. Which is like, so I always knew this was going to happen. You know, they had the drop on me. It was like, because I knew they were going to have the drop on me. So it was fun to play that way. So, um... They rewrote, they rewrote the end, and the end was, you know, Andrew did a really good job writing it. There was this huge speech in the Men of Letters, and I'd asked him for a line that I wanted to put in. So when Rowena's dead, I'm like, and he, yeah, and he, Lucifer. <coughs> Lucifer. Sorry, guess which one that was. <laughs> um, and my line, I added the line. Um, funny, I always thought it would be me that killed her. And everyone was like, you can't, that's awful, that's terrible. I'm like, it's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, it kind of is absolutely correct. It makes sense. Because, you know, 
Rowena was never really a mother to Crowley. The thing that was the problem for Crowley's, it's Fergus's mother, it's not Crowley's mother, and that's what always gets so irritating about it. Um, I pl always played it as though everybody else has a mother, so why can't I? And she always played it rather brilliantly that way, but it would have been so much more interesting if she was my ex-wife, or, you know what I mean? <laughs> she was Gavin's mother, but was my ex-wife, it would have been a fascinating uh, situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, we tried to make it work that way, but uh, it, it, was, it, it got a bit complex. So they put in this huge, it was a great speech that Andrew wrote about, like, I've been trying to keep my job for so long, I never realized how much I hated it. I think that was a bit personal from him. <laughs> but, but it was like, it was, it was written very caustically in that way. And, and I think Bob deliberately designed the shot so he could cut the middle out. And the middle contained the words. It just kept going on and winning and winning and winning. Never stopping winning. And even when I lost, I won. Even when I lose, I won. You know, never stop winning. And then I come back and did the conclusion of the thing to them at the table. And at the end, when Lucifer is there and I step up and I know that I'm the only answer in this way, he goes, you know, you took it personally. I say, yeah, I hate that line. That's just fine. Okay, we'll play that out. Yes, you humiliated me. How the hell could Crowley be humiliated? I mean, he had no... The, the, yeah. guy, the guy was, you know, as, as, as deviant and as odd as you could possibly be. He would flip everything yeah, for winning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It didn't make any difference. So, so it was like, okay, I'll let that go. But it's like, and he goes, you know, and the line was, you know you're going to lose. And my line was, funny you should say that. Funny you should say that. And then I say, because even when I lose, I win. And I turn around to uh, the boys and I say, goodbye, boys. And then stab myself, which is supposed to be the shock moment. And so they cut it out. And I was like, hmm. Well, that made it less fun than it would have been. Yeah. So it was, it was a little bit, eh. So I did a T-shirt in revenge, and we raised plenty of money for charity, and thank you very much. That was awesome. And the T-shirt is awesome. T-shirt is great. It's fun to do. Um, but, it's fun. It's a, it, listen, I have so many fond memories of doing that show. It would be disingenuous to complain about it because it was eight years of fun and camaraderie. And, I'm, you know, Jared was looking at me and goes, God, dude, I've known you nearly a decade. I mean, if you think they were in, he was in his 20s when I met him. Mm -hmm. And now he has kids and, you know, they're married and grown up and very cool people. A very nice group of people to go to work with. And I, I got married, an amazing wedding in, uh, in uh, Pacific Palisades, sort of between Malibu and and uh, Santa Monica and it was you know everybody finished work on the fratter day as we used to call it and and planes were hired and people's plans were changed and you know everybody in the crew was invited to our wedding and it was black tie and oh that's awesome every single person that could come came and there was you know there was a lot of people there so it was a very very wonderful place to work and, and be part of and, and the boys are a big part of that <laughs> point of like okay I think this is the right time like I, it was a it's a weird decision and then I'm gonna sell them out <laughs> when Jensen got to Vancouver two weeks ago I have a text message from him he's like man crazy been back in Vancouver I feel like we could do two more years and I was like let's talk man like I <laughs> to all the SBN family out there thank you so much for uh, taking this journey with us for 15 years uh, we love you and we won't be gone long I promise thanks for watching wayward Winchester subscribe for more awesome wayward content till next time as always no chick flick moments peace